Hello and welcome to Compass Global Markets. I'm Tony Boyajian. Well, as usual, there's a lot, lots happening in the world of financial markets, and we'll uh, we'll kick off with what happened on Friday with U.S. GDP figures coming through. Fairly solid numbers. It printed at three percent. That's for the third quarter, and it matched nicely with the previous quarter's print of 3.1 percent. We saw the U.S. dollar strengthen as well, especially on these optimistic hopes of tax reforms going through, because both the U.S. Senate and the House are now in favour of it. However, what they've approved is only a smaller level of tax cuts than what President Trump had flagged. So what we've seen is some choppiness in the US dollar. We've seen the US dollar pull back a little bit over the last 24 hours. And the tax cuts uh, apparently uh, that they're talking about could be phased over a five year period. So it looks like the US dollar will remain on the back foot whilst the, uh, these deliberations continue over the next two months. Now, the next uh, cab off the rank is what's happening with the US Fed chair position. Uh, Donald Trump will make a decision before he goes to China next week. The favorite at the moment is current uh, US Fed member Jerome Powell. Uh, Jerome Powell is a Republican, whereas uh, Janet Yellen is a Democrat. So um, it looks like Donald Trump wants to change uh, Janet Yellen for, uh, for a, Repub a Republican candidate. Now, the good thing about Jerome Powell, according to the market, is his uh, policy preferences are quite similar to Yellen's in that gradual normalization of interest rates, a steady as she goes approach, which uh, is what the markets like, and in particular the equity markets, uh, and that will keep the US dollar on the back foot as well if those. Uh, of course, eventuate. Now, we've seen um, the US dollar strengthen earlier this week, especially against the yen, uh, after Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe won a uh, majority uh, vote in the election. Uh, and as expected, the ECB left uh, interest rates unchanged. Uh, what they did, however, is taper or reduce the amount of bonds they buy from a monthly perspective. So from next year onwards, from January to September, they'll buy only half the amount of bonds they were buying this year. We've seen the Euro come off about 2% against the US dollar. Now Mario Draghi, the ECB president, he wants to see a, a lower uh, Euro because it's advantageous for their exports and also it helps push imported inflation higher. Look elsewhere, the UK meets uh, uh, this week on Thursday. The market's expecting that in light of five-year highs in the inflation rate, they may raise that interest rate that they cut back during the Brexit referendum, uh, but don't uh, read too much into it. There's a lot of uncertainty in the UK, so certainly watch this space. Now locally in Australia, we saw third quarter inflation numbers print quite uh, quite low. It came in at 0.6% for the third quarter. Now the second quarter was 1.9% and the first quarter was 2.1%. So the trend is definitely down. Uh, inflation is quite subdued, which is the reason why the Reserve Bank will be on hold regarding interest rates for perhaps another another 12 months. Now the political uncertainty in, in Australia uh, has circled around this news of, with the High Court disqualifying Prime Minister or Deputy Prime Minister uh, Barnaby Joyce um, from, from Parliament. Uh, now, his seat needs to be, um, uh, it goes to a by-election on the 2nd of December. Effectively, Australia is at the moment uh, governed by a hung parliament because Malcolm Turnbull has lost his one-seat majority in parliament until the 2nd of December. Uh, so that will see the Australian dollar remain on the back foot as uncertain conditions certainly prevail. Uh, look, going forward, we think the Australian dollar will be between a 75 and a half, 77 and a half range. Um, and in terms of upcoming data, we'll look on Friday locally here in Australia. We've got September retail trade figures coming up, which will be important to see if that spending slowdown continues. And in the US, um, there's a couple of important developments. Of course, we're all waiting on news of who the Fed chair is going to be from uh, President Trump's announcement. But, but certainly on Thursday this week, the, the favourite Fed chair pick, Jerome Powell, speaks in New York. So it'll be interesting to see what he says, followed by um, uh, the FOMC November meeting, which takes place tomorrow, actually. And on Friday, it'll uh, cap it all off when we have the jobs report, the non-farm payrolls out of the US this coming Friday. Have a great week. Thanks for watching. I'm Tony Boyajian, Compass Global Markets.